Hey everybody, this is Mr. Horton with a series of video backup lessons for Studio Art 1, Studio Art 2, and film appreciation and cinematography. <laughs> Vernie Arts, Iona Prep. All right, guys, and welcome to the next project, which is Cinematography Shadow Box. Uh, this project is going to be about picking your favorite movie scene or TV show scene or something with, like, a lot of depth and cinematography and in, like, a rectangular uh, formation, okay? So this video is going to cover two different grades. It's going to cover the source image grabbing. Okay, so you're going to pick me three source images, three images that you potentially want to do for this project, and then I'm going to go through them and pick them, and then we'll go from there. And then secondly, it's going to pick the very simple process of drawing your picture down onto the paper. Okay, so I have an example here, which I'm going to show you in a second, but you guys should have from me, you should have two identically sized pieces of foam core, which each are 18 by 9 both of these. You should also have a third piece. Now, the third piece will vary in size depending, okay? Some of you guys will have exactly this size. This is a scrap piece. It's extra. Other people will have a baggie with pieces in it, but it'll equal out to a similar size to this because this doesn't matter. It can be cut up, okay? We'll cross that bridge later, but you should have two identical pieces. Plus, you should have some paper, okay? Which in its current state should, I think, be bigger then this will cross this bridge. We have to cut this paper. We'll cross that bridge in a second. All right, so back to the source image. So I have my image here, which is of Poe Dameron from Star Wars Episode uh, 7, okay? And I drew it out on the piece of paper. And now you already know this is already completely done. So you can actually see that the final part of the project, which is actually pushing out the depth layers, which you can see right there. You can actually see totally through. You can see the buttresses. Okay, those are those um, those are those columns coming up, holding the pieces up. Okay, but yeah, we're gonna get through this whole project. So we're gonna pick source images. We're gonna draw it out. You're gonna glue it down to the foam core. You're gonna cut out the sections. You're gonna raise the sections per the depth level. We'll go through all this. Okay, but for right now, we're just gonna focus on grabbing source images and drawing the thing down on the page. We're not even gonna think about doing it in 3D or gluing or cutting or anything yet. Okay, that's gonna be after this, all right? So let's go on to how to pick a viable source image for this project. All right, so right off the bat, I'm gonna tell you, please avoid um, posters for the movie. So like I have this example of here of what not to do. So this is uh, one of the early posters for Pacific Rim. And yeah, it has depth, but the issue here is it's not rectangular, it's, it's a poster formation. So you wanna kinda just avoid these type of images if you can. Again, try to just more so pick screenshots from the film itself. And um, there can be movie stills you could pick that are stills of shots from the movie, but we'll go through that when you pick your source images and I'll tell you what's, what's good and what isn't good. All right, so for my two examples of what I am going to show you guys, I have this famous shot from Aliens, okay? And I have this random shot from Space Jam. Both are good picks for different reasons. Now, I wanna explain to you guys what the wrong way to perceive this is, all right? So with the alien shot, the wrong way to perceive this is it being just two layers. So you might think that this is just a background layer and then it's just a foreground layer. Don't think of it like that. You could actually break this up into numerous layers. So let's go back to the background. So the background is layer one, Layer two would be Ripley and Hicks. Layer three is Ripley's forearm and uh, her other hand holding the, the bottom of the gun and a little bit of the gun. Next layer is the next part of the gun. And I'm just going to keep moving up here. Then the other hand. And then finally, the very tip of the rifle. So all in all, that could be six layers of depth. By the way, I'm when we get to this step, when we actually get to the part where we're actually breaking this up into depth steps, I'm actually not letting you guys go past eight layers of depth. And by the way, it has nothing to do with it being too complicated. It has more to do with the fact of when we get into the meat and potatoes of you guys gluing down the struts that go underneath the the picture that lift up the pieces, the buttresses, for every layer, it's two squares. 
So if you're at eight layers deep, you're looking at 16 squares. It's a lot of cutting. So you really don't want to go more than eight. And in I said, in rare situations, I'll let you guys go up to eight. But most of you guys, I feel like, are going to be in the four to six range. Okay? So yeah, there's that one. All right, let's go over to the Space Jam one. So on the Space Jam one, we have our background layer, which is of obviously the crowd in the background. This one's more logical to ingest. Then we have Bugs Bunny. Then we have Michael Jordan. Then we have Lola. Then here's a, a little bit annoying. I would, If I were doing this, I would have put um, Bill Murray on the next layer and then his shoulder on the final layer just to give him like an extra layer of depth because of how close he is to you. Remember, the further the things get away from you, the more the depth crushes together into single layers. So you want to play with that a little bit. But I could have gone even more nuts with this if I wanted to. But again, this is a, another six layers of depth in total. And these are two really good shots to pick. Okay, so now that you have your source image picked and you submitted it and then I okayed it when we did the when we did the critique of the source images, okay? The next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to find your paper and you're going to want to cut your paper down to be 18 by 9 inches, okay? And the easiest way to do this is, uh, the way I would do it, is take the foam core, which is already cut 18 by 9, and just lay it down on top of the paper and just trace the edges of the foam core and then cut it out. I mean, you could just take a ruler and do it and measure it out, but I feel like that's a little bit dicier because the, the ruler can turn i mean i have a t-square so it's ensuring my lines going straight across but um you don't want to make you don't want to accidentally cut the line diagonal so just the easier way is just to trace the foam core that's cut out okay i got my paper cut out now at 18 inches across nine inches wide there's my scrap right there all right so i'm gonna go on to now drawing the picture that i picked which is this image uh from the matrix of neo in the dojo fight scene onto my paper. All right, so you can see here that I actually gridded it uh, just to get like a generalized stamp of my character down. Now I'm gonna go back in and erase the grid and refine this, let's cut to that. All right, so I got rid of my grid, I refined my lines. I'm really happy with how this came out. I'm not gonna put in, I'm not gonna put in some faint background stuff, which again, background is totally optional. I'll actually let you know when you when we go through your source image picking if you should do the background or not in yours, but I feel like in this one, I kind of have to because the the straightness of the lines um, being contrasting to the organic nature of the foreground is going to kind of help it pop forward in mine. So uh, yeah, all right, background lines. All right, so I now have in some really loose background lines. Um, I'm going to now go in with some pens and I'm going to start inking in some of this. Now, remember, for the second grade, the project grade for this, the actual drawing of it, you can hand me in kind of anything for the for this step. It could be just flat pencil line. It could be inked. It could be shadowed. It could be colored. If you want to color a color pencil and do like a full picture with color pencil, do whatever. I just want a finished picture in your mind of the image that we picked per what I'm telling you to do when we go through your source image um, critique. Okay. All right. On to what mine is going to be inked, which so mine's going to look like a little bit comic booky. All right. So I've now inked everything. It looks like a coloring book page and I got a lot of the rice paper lines in. Okay. Now I'm going to go back through and I'm going to erase some of my underline that's peeking out in some spots and... I have to put in some just solid black coloring for some shadow, like in here and the dark areas here. So I'm gonna go through that. Okay, so now I've gone through with my Sharpies and I've put in a bunch of shadow here all over the character. Now I'm gonna go back in with some pens and I'm gonna just go back through and I'm gonna do some hatching. And I'm also gonna add in more shadow in the background just so that I get the appropriate shadow tones in like this area. All right, so this is done and I've hatched it. And honestly, I was cursing myself that I even did the background because this took forever. Like I just go through every single one of these boxes and just do lines and lines and lines and lines and then opposite lines in places, but it looks really good. I'm really happy with it. Um, this is gonna be what I would photo uh, photograph, upload to classroom for the finished one. I'm not gonna color it 
You can color yours if you want to. You don't have to ink it. Again, you could finish this however you want to finish it. Okay? But once you once the picture is picked from the source image pick, you're going to draw it. Remember to cut out the paper to be the correct size. And remember the big hurdle, the big, big hurdle with this drawing, and this is something we really haven't encountered before in previous projects of this class. Because you're working with a set size limit, I tried to match the framing as best I could. I had to add a little bit over here, okay, from the picture, because I had to add maybe like an inch to the right, and I had to add a little bit on the left too, right here. But I mean, I filled it in for the most part. But what I'm basically saying is try to fill the space as accurately to the image bordering as possible, okay? Don't just draw me a little picture, because if you draw the picture too small, Okay, you're then going to run into the issue of we actually have to then cut the foam core down to match the spacing that you messed up, which I'm telling you right now is going to happen with a handful of you, but we'll cross that bridge later, okay, because it's not that big of an issue. I mean, it's a fixable issue, but don't worry about it so much, but like I said, draw the picture out, refine it, photograph it, upload it, it counts as a project grade, good luck. If you have any questions about the assignment, email me or refer to the project on Google Classroom. See you in class.